Hey YouTube, this is Chris with the Poboy Special Channel, and guess where we're at? Scotty's Gunworks. Hey Scott, so what do we have in store today? Well today we're going to be cutting the uh, the frame for a beaver tail grip safety. Okay. <clears throat> what we got here, we've got an Ed Brown beaver tail grip safety. And we've got a little uh, little jig here. Basically what it is, it, um, it, it just kind of makes installation a little bit easier. And what you do is, of course, we're going to totally disassemble the frame here. Take the uh, thumb safety off, and then we're going to insert the, uh, the little jig, I guess, if you will, in there, and then I'll, I'll kind of show you how that's done. Okay, Scott, now what are you going to start doing? Well, I'm going to start taking the parts out of the frame, and then we'll install the little uh, jig here and kind of go through how it works. Now that we've got the uh, the parts out of it, we just left the trigger part and the uh, magazine release still in there. You can kind of see how we're going to have to cut that frame. You can, I don't know if you can see it or not, you can see how the hole is not lining up with uh, that hole on the frame. So what we're going to do is install the uh, little tool here, scribe around it, and then I'm going to rough it out with a grinder. And then I can kind of, you know, bring it in and show you a little more how we're going to fine fit it. Now that I got that in there, what we'll do now is I'll take and take the scribe and just kind of make a scribe mark around it. Okay, and so all you're doing is scribing little marks on there so you'll know exactly where to cut. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Like I said, when I <clears throat> cut it with the grinder here in a few minutes, I'll I'll make them a little bit. I won't go right up to the scribe mark because I want to fine fit it. You can kind of see the principle, you know. See how that that's that's going to be the same radius, you know. That's the purpose of that tool right there. Object of the game is to keep them nice and even. I always get to bring the uh, grip safety with me where I can kind of look at it. We're getting close. I think what I'll do is I will uh, stop right there and go in there and start fine tuning it with a hand file now at this point. You're just making sure that everything stays even the way it's supposed to, right? Right, exactly. What I always like doing is kind of working one side down at a time. It just really depends on the situation. Uh, I know a lot of times, you know, you can get these little fitting tools right, like this right here. And, you know, all grip safeties are going to be uh, pretty much the same as far as, you know, whatever brand you get. Uh, 
but I like to, uh, I don't like to, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't like to uh, depend on the tool. I mean, that'll just kind of get you in the neighborhood. I know in the early days, I always just kind of hand fitted everything. That way I was sure that it was going to fit properly. You okay. Know, because if you just rely on that right there, you might have two or three different uh, safeties and some of them might vary just a little bit, you know. So if you really want that thing to, you know, be nice and even on each side and you don't want no big gaps or anything like that in it, then uh, it's good just to use good common sense, you know, get it down to about where you, you know, get it close. That's about all, that's really all that tool is really good for. To kind of get you in the neighborhood and then just fine fit it, you know. Don't let it fool you. Don't, uh, don't think, well, I got this tool now, you know, I'll just cut it right down to it and then there you go. Uh, and it'll work, but, you know, you might have big gaps, you know, in it if you don't use a little common sense, you know, and just... So if you really want that hand-fitted look, yeah, exactly. hand-fit it. Exactly, hand-fit it, exactly. It's going to take more time, you know. Uh, but this tool does save a lot of time, too, you know. But cut a little bit and then just check it. Cut a little bit and then just check it. And now, can, what are we looking for here? What we want to do is we want to keep cutting on it until we get the hole lined up. And you don't want no big gaps in it. I mean, I can grind it off, you know, and just stick it on there and it'll work. But the object of the game is to make sure that little crack right there is, uh, you can, you know, you don't want to be able to see no no big gap in it. Got you know it. What I'm saying? We want this to fit perfect. And once we get the hole lined up, we'll take a Dremel tool and we'll cut this swoop to where it all blends in together. Now I'm fixing to put a little of this layout ink on it. Uh, as you can see, I got it bobbed off pretty good. Still got a little ways to go yet. So now it's just kind of one of them situations where you just want to take your time. You don't want to get in no hurry with it at all. Uh, and like I said, I could make it work by just, you know, cutting it off. But we want this to look, we want this to be a custom fit. Right. I think that's dry enough. And we just kind of put it in there like that. And I'll just kind of, you know. Can you tell me anything about that? No, I can see the hole still likes... Looks like about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe, or less. And you can see the little shiny marks right up under there. Sure can. And I'll take the file and I'll just kind of hit it more on this side right here. Sometimes, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I have seen them where it might be a little bit thicker on one side. Like right in there, it might be thicker than that side. So what I'm doing is I'm custom fitting this frame to this particular grip safety. We want to make sure that, uh, you know, it looks good all the way around. Everything's nice and even. What we'll do is we'll take the, uh, the grip safety and we'll set it right in there like that. Now I've got an old thumb safety right here. And it, at this point it should fit a little tight, and it is. It's, it's going in there, but it ain't going to clean through. So what you do is you just kind of put that in there like that, and you do this right here. Move it up and down like so. You know, going all the way into full engagement as though your hand was pressing it in to release the safety, the grip safety. And you just do this a few times. And then you pull the uh, thumb safety out, and you'll see some shiny marks there. Let me get the camera over here. I want y'all to see this. I don't know exactly if it's showing everything I want it to, but I'll give it a try. Anyway, we can see some shiny marks here. So the principle of this thing is to just keep doing that and keep hitting the shiny spots, you know, with a uh, with a stone, you know. And I tell you what I like to do is I've got this uh, little contraption that fits in there, and just for Just for the head goat, I always put that in there, make sure that thing's going to roll on you a little bit. And that way it just kind of ensures that, I, you know, don't get in too deep with it. I mean, if you got the tools here, you might as well use them. Um, and I'll just take my little stone. Let's see. Position this where I can do some cutting when y'all can watch. Let's see how that works. Anyway. You've got some kerosene on your stone and keep it oiled up, and then just kind of focus on these shiny spots. You definitely don't want to get no smaller than the uh, 
little guide that's on there. You see it start rolling, you'll know that you're, you're down as far as you need to go. We don't want no big old unsightly gaps in it. Get the shiny spots on the other side. Okay, here we are. We finally got it fitted. As everybody can see, I hope you can tell. Um, anyway, it's fitted in with no gaps, which is what we want. And you know, uh, got the uh, thumb safety stuck in there, which is not the one we're going to use on it. But as you can see, it is uh, fitted. Uh, there it is, fully engaged. You know, of course, that frees the trigger. And it's going to come up about right there, which is going to, uh, you know, make sure the trigger doesn't pull if, you know, it's not engaged. Now, I want to point this out too. Now, everybody can see here where it's kind of, you know, up a little bit high right here on this swoop. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put it all back together, get it fitted, and then I'm going to cut the swoop, both the bottom and the top. Get this excess metal off. That way, you know, it'll all blend in together. It'll look just like it grew that way. <laughs> As you can see, everything, you know, is got good spring tension in it. I mean, I can, which I've got thumb safety. Let me keep thumb safety off. Thumb safety's off right now. Now, when the trigger's pulled, without that being engaged, it shouldn't go off. And you can see I'm putting a lot of force on that trigger. It's not even moving the hammer. But when I grip it, now then, that's what we want. Let go. Grip. Stopping the hammer. You don't want that to slam without that slide on there. You're in danger of bending your hammer pin and causing undue damage. But anyway, make sure you stop it like I just did. Grip it. Of course, grip safety works. Or the thumb safety, rather. It shouldn't. You'll see that it doesn't move because I've got the thumb safety on. When I grip it, boom, goes off. Fortunately, we didn't really have to do any fitting on this right here. Uh, it pretty much just dropped in. And sometimes you get lucky and, and that happens. And if I did have to fit it, what I would basically do is just take a little of the metal off right in this area right here. You know, is how that works. Usually it's just very little. Just want to make sure you know when uh, the spring's got it. And you ain't got your grip on it that it, like this represents the trigger bar it just you know just comes down of course the more that metal you take off right here you know uh it's going to determine how that thing's going to work so you don't want to take a lot of the metal off right there and sometimes you have to remove a little in front but in this particular case right here it works just fine okay here we are i'm fixing to start putting the swoop in that as you can tell i've then took the hammer out uh, got it all set up. Even got the uh, old grip thumb safety in there. But anyway, you can see it's got the original spring out that it would have if it was all, you know, put back together. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this stone here and I'm going to stay off the frame. I mean, I might heat it a little bit there in the end, but I'm going to cut all this excess metal down right here. You see how much we got there? And it just basically boils down taking this Dremel tool here and just cutting the swoop, just blending it all in. I'm going to try to do a little bit of it and let y'all watch, but I'm probably going to end up having to cut the camera off because it's something that really needs to be done under, you know, a big magnifying glass that I've got over here. So I kind of want you to get the right idea of what I'm doing. I think you can see that. Keeping it off the frame, keeping it the same contour. I'm gonna cut the camera off because I'm getting down to a crucial point. You can see there how I'm taking metal off right there. See the before. Now you're seeing the after. It's starting to blend in a little bit, but I've still got a ways to go. I'll just kind of blend one side in at a time and taking my time with it. off kind of taking my time with it 
uh, paying real close attention to every detail. I've done got it all roughed out, got the swoop cut in to where it's just contoured with the frame. It just swoops back. You can see it's kind of rough looking right now, you know, because uh, I took that uh, little stone and did all that on the Dremel tool. Um, got it swooped down really good to where everything's just, you know, looks like it's just growed all together. Uh, even got the bottom part, you know, I left it just a little bit big because what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry it in there in the polishing room. Then I'm going to start blending it with my polishing wheel, you know, swooped it all down, you know, and polished it all in real nice and that way, you know, it just looks like one piece. Um, I've done went on ahead and, uh, you know, kind of give it a good brush finish under here. Still got a little more, you know, finishing to do, but I think it's good enough for the video. Everybody can kind of get an idea, you know, how well that fits under there and, and how our swoop is right here on each side. Um, Basically, it all boils down to now is just polishing the gun and polishing everything in together is what it all really boils down to. But as far as our fitting is concerned, we got everything fitted in good and tight. Got the little ridges to where they kind of run together, the little lines in it. You know, just kind of all runs continuously. Plenty of play in it. Of course, when it's all blued, this is going to be stainless steel right here. And they'll probably have a blush, a brush finish on it. I'm, I'm sure that's what the customer will want instead of a matte finish. Uh, but anyway, um, there is a working grip safety, a beaver tail grip safety, which you know allows the gun to sit really good down into your hand. You ain't got to worry about you know hammer bite or slide you know bite because I mean there's no way it's going to get up there to it, uh, and that's the purpose of that. So anyway, that's our. Uh, grip safety fitting video as usual I really do appreciate everybody watching these videos and, and I'm going to do my best to do a really good job for you and uh, turn out wor work <laughs> that I'd want to receive again I thank you